Want to watch football without the restrictions of blackouts or cable? Check out expressvpn.com to help you get access to all the live games. Sign up today using the link in the description to get three free months. Yo, what up, brothers? It's the director, Chargers fans. Well, loads of Chargers fans, man, have been on the edge waiting for, you know, a brand new signing to come to the Bolts. Well, now we got one. Justin Herbert has a new weapon to throw to this season. And honestly, I'm pretty ecstatic, man. A lot of people, you know, I wasn't going crazy like we did with J.C. Jackson and uh, Khalil Mack. But this is still a very solid signing for the Chargers. One that does come in a phase where the Chargers are going to be looking to fill vacancies on the roster and do so at a cheaper cost. As far as value is concerned, I would say Gerald Everett is a very, very solid addition to this team, one that is going to have an immediate impact in 2022, right? And at first glance, some would say they don't like or maybe don't even know Gerald, uh, Gerald Everett that well. I could maybe say the same thing. I was familiar with him because of fantasy football, paying attention to the, uh, the Seahawks tight ends and such. But at the same time, I think it's fine, right? Everett isn't one of those names that pops off the page, but I'm here to tell you this was a solid move for the Chargers, and we're going to explain why. Why? So before we do get into this video, guys, question in the comments for you Chargers fans. How many touchdowns do you think Gerald Everett will log in his first year with the Chargers? If you guys need a little bit more insight in how he accomplishes that, uh, just you know, watch for the video ahead and we'll get some information in your brains so you guys can come to a nice conclusion there. With that, guys, let's get into this one. Before we do, hit us up with a like and sub. If you do enjoy this Chargers content, the small amount of time you guys take to hit the like, sub, and bell notification helps out a lot. Let's get into this one. Lights, camera, action. Gerald Everett to the Chargers and why this is a solid move for the Bolts. Let's go ahead and dive right into it, man. Gerald Everett, tight end, formerly of the Seattle Seahawks, formerly of the Los Angeles Rams, signed a two-year, $12 million deal with the Los Angeles Chargers. And just before people start freaking out, because this is always the first question I see on the channel, uh, how much money will the Chargers have left after acquiring this brand new piece to the offense? Well, this should leave the Chargers with around $11 million in spending space and $18 million in effective space. And this is coming via Daniel Popper on Twitter. Now, what this means is that the Chargers, let's say after the money they put aside for the draft, as well as I think Popper has them at $7 million in emergency funds during the season, that leaves them with $11 million left to spend right now. The effective $18 million basically means if they didn't put aside $7 million for in-season acquisitions, then they can go ahead and use $18 million. And really quick, because I actually wasn't going to talk about this, but on a light note here on that situation, if I were the Chargers, in this season where we're pretty much pushing the chips all in, I would say go ahead and I uh, don't feel, you know, threatened and don't be afraid to spend some of that extra reserve money before going into the season. Because in my mind, if you're going to be taking these sorts of risks, if you're going to be using the sorts of strategies, use Joey Bosa's contract restructure. Keep that in your back pocket just in case. What I'm saying is that you don't need to restructure Bosa right now. I don't think it's necessary. But go ahead and use the extra money you would have put aside. And if something does happen, you got Bosa's restructure in your back pocket. That's just what I'm saying. That's what I'm word spitting out here. Um, uh, because I do think the Chargers have a couple more bigger moves to make before we make our way into the draft. So this will still have plenty of money uh, for the Chargers to address offensive line, even with just $11 million. So don't worry about that, Chargers fans. And in terms of money, I do think Gerald Everett is a pretty decent value. Okay, I saw guys like Tyler Conklin, uh, CJ Uzama, Evan Ingram get paid a lot more. And I do not think their play justifies such a higher pay uh, the, or their play doesn't justify such a higher number for them in terms of, you know, Gerald Everett being the uh, the guy the Chargers got. So I think the Chargers got a really nice deal. I think they got a solid player out here. Let's get into it, man. So I think tight end for the Chargers was always a big priority, right? 
I think there's obviously a value uh, at tight end when you're talking Justin Herbert. And when you look at Justin Herbert in the Pro Bowl, which is why we got him in the Pro Bowl in this particular photo, he went absolutely ham with Mark Andrews, the uh, uh, Pro Bowl tight end for the uh, Baltimore Ravens. And that honestly put an idea in a lot of Chargers fans' heads. Like, man, let's go out there and get ourselves a stud tight end. And I think I'm definitely a part of that opinion as well. I think, you know, Justin Herbert with the guy at the caliber of a Mark Andrews would absolutely thrive. But I don't think it's necessarily like, you know, it's not a necessity for this team at this point in time. Be it, you know, Gerald Everett is not a household name, but he'll provide a lot of value for this team, specifically for what we need right now. We'll get into that more in just a second. Now, let's take a look at the player here in Gerald Everett, sporting number 81 with the Rams and the Seahawks. Of course, he's going to have a new number here with the Chargers. Um, I view, let's see, a... Uh, uh, Starting in 12 games last year, Everett totaled 478 yards, four touchdowns in Seattle, okay? And outside of 2020, Gerald Everett has had pretty solid hands. I know there's been a lot of people maybe a little bit worried. I think he had a game where, where he had multiple turnovers or something like that via fumble. I remember hearing the same thing about Jared Cook, and as far as I remember, I think he was just fine. Jared Cook wasn't popping off the page or anything like that, but he wasn't causing these catastrophic, you know, mistakes that the uh, Chargers fans, myself included at one point, were really worried about. Sure, you know, Cook wasn't a superstar out there, but he did exactly what he was asked to do, and I think the Chargers are kind of looking for a step up from the Jared Cook last season. Now, historically... Everett has always played with another tight end. I do want to point this out, okay? He had, I think, Will Disley with the Seattle Seahawks and then Tyler Higby with the LA Rams. This season, in my opinion, I feel like Everett is being set up for his best performance yet because I do view him as going to be featured as a tight end one, okay? So when you take a look at his numbers, nothing too spectacular. 478 yards, four touchdowns last season. Again, he was splitting time with Will Disley, who is also a very talented tight end. I do think we're going to see more opportunities for uh, Gerald Everett to maybe pop off this season. You got to remember as well, he's only 27 years old. This is not a bad time to pick up a uh, tight end as in terms of when they tend to break out in the career. Now, if anybody wants like a simple explanation to what I see in a Gerald Everett, and of course, this is a very loose resemblance that I'm noticing here. I view him as a better, younger Jared Cook type of player, but I do see some upside there, okay? So the Chargers are obviously looking for something very specific from their tight ends. They value speed and verticality from the position. They want to make sure this player is very much so involved in the passing game. And Everett, in my opinion, does fit that bill. Although he's a few inches shorter than Jared Cook, I think he is 6'3 versus Cook 6'5". I believe Everett does offer more in terms of speed, okay? And that's going to be something the Chargers have been looking for this season. Definitely something you value at the position. I totally understand why they went after Everett, by after, especially after looking at his highlights. If you guys want to look at highlights, check out my Twitter. Unfortunately, we can't put it in these videos because we will get flagged instantly. So only at 27 years old, we are signing him at an age where tight ends historically find their footing. This is true. If you guys remember a lot of tight ends, especially if you play fantasy football, right? Let's say, like me, you decided to draft Kyle Pitts this season. He had a pretty solid season, but in terms of fantasy football production, you usually want to wait a few years before finding that breakout season to add a tight end to, you know, monster numbers and as far as the passing game and receiving game. So I do think that he's got enough tread on his tires. He's got enough time and experience in the league where he could see a lot of, uh, he could see a lot of success, especially in the new environment that he's in here with the LA Chargers. But let's be clear. Everett just does things that Jared Cook cannot do, okay? I do make the comparison because I do think he's the same type of player, but he also does add upgrades at several different, you know, aspects of what he brings as a player, okay? One of the biggest ones I noticed, and I did notice this in season last year too, man, Gerald Everett, dude, rack the yak, my friend. In terms of physicality, Everett impresses me a lot. This guy is nasty. I think I put on my tweet yesterday. Uh, you, you see Gerald Everett, you know, catch the ball. The next thing he does is he looks for contact and turns into a power back. This guy after the catch is like, I, I see very few tight ends do what he does in terms of really throwing his body, you know, into the game, trying to fight for extra yards. And a lot of the times that does result in broken tackles. Okay. He looks for contact. He does not go down easy. And this does bring a fresh aspect I would say to the offense that we just don't have right now of course 
I think his yak numbers are pretty comparable to Jared Cook, but he did break a lot more tackles, and I do think he has a lot more potential to break off for even more this season. Everett forced 11 missed tackles in 2021, which, again, not something you see from the Chargers receivers so much. Maybe Austin Eckler a lot, but not the receiver. So this is going to be a very nice change of pace for the team. He will be an integral piece to converting first downs for Justin Herbert, and I think Chargers fans are going to like this guy a lot. Another good point to make here is that I do believe that this is going to be Gerald Everett's best quarterback to date, okay? We need to remember that Herbert is going to love this guy and vice versa. Sure, Everett played with Russell Wilson last year. I totally understand that, Seahawks and now Broncos fans. Russell Wilson, very high-caliber quarterback. But Russell Wilson with the Seattle Seahawks in 2021 was just not that good. I think a lot of people noticed it. I sure noticed it. He had a huge drop-off from the Russell Wilson that we know. And we kind of, as Chargers fans, hold on to that idea that it translates to the Broncos as well. I don't think it will. But my point here being is that Russell Wilson in 2021 – is not the same Russell Wilson from previous, okay? And that is just strictly speaking to, I say, the production of a Gerald Everett in 2021 specifically, where he did see his career year close to 500 yards, four touchdowns, okay? okay. Previous to that, he was playing with quarterback Jared Goff with the Los Angeles Rams, okay? In my opinion, Justin Herbert is the best quarterback to sling him the ball in his career. You mix that in with other threats, wide receiver threats like Keenan Allen, you know, Mike Williams, you could even throw in uh, Austin Eckler and Donald Parham. He'll have the opportunities to get open, right? There's going to be a lot of attention thrown to our, you know, super superstar duo wide receiver core and then obviously our receiving back i think it's going to give uh, uh, everett a good amount of uh, opportunities to get open and make some plays and i would also be remiss if i didn't mention he's going to have a huge upgraded offensive line as well which means more time more opportunity to for his plays to develop he's going to get open he's going to make plays so i'm very excited to see what his potential is with the los angeles chargers which in my opinion should be the best offense that he's ever played with uh, in his young career so far Next up, not flashy, but necessary. And this is an important one I think Chargers fans, even me included, because I'm, I'm a Chargers fan just like you guys. Like, I want them to go out and sign the every big name possible, like really bring the hype to the team. But this was a very necessary move by the Chargers, okay? Everett's upside to me is as high as any other tight end in the league. When you pair him with Justin Herbert especially, okay? But some will say there were other options the Chargers could have gone after. And truthfully, I just don't think this is the case. Before free agency began, there were some big names, right? A lot of us wanted David and Joku. You know, Rob Gronkowski probably not on the table. He probably returns to, you know, the Bucks. There's a lot of big names out there. And honestly, they just uh, they got scooped up really quick <laughs> or even tagged like David and Joku. Even that's that being the case, that he's not like a huge superstar like that thing that the Chargers fans were dreaming about this offseason, I think Everett is still great. And I think Everett at this point, with what the Chargers were trying to do, was the Chargers guy this season, okay? In terms of fit, money, and need, he really does check all the boxes. Because Brandon Staley does know this guy. You have to remember, I think his last season with the Rams was uh, also Gerald Everett's last season with the Rams as well, okay? He knows what he's getting, and he sees potential, and that, to me, does get me excited. And the Chargers, in my opinion, even outside that relationship, got a great tight end. You know, while also rejuvenating their defense, it's a win-win. It's a it's a huge puzzle, guys, this offseason. And I think in order to make that defense work, maybe you had to go grab a different guy that's not super elite at tight end, but one that I do think fits this team quite well, okay? So what's going to happen with Gerald Everett and the Chargers? Well, I'm looking at a career year. I think this could definitely be a career year for uh, 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 Gerald Everett, especially considering his career year is just under 500 yards, four touchdowns. I think you factor in what the Chargers are trying to do in their scheme and justin herbert this is not out of the realm of possibilities for him to have a career season right i think from what i saw herbert wants to target his tight ends more especially from the pro bowl right and it's a pro bowl i get it but still justin herbert's gonna like having that big target in the middle of the field and Everett will deliver i do believe that i think you know i'm going to guess that he gets somewhere north of 700 yards and six touchdowns okay maybe six touchdowns right and i think that's gonna be an awesome year as far as the chargers tight end position right and that's why everett fits this mold so well our production will mainly come from keenan allen right very high paid wide receiver mike williams another high paid wide receiver and austin eckler i think those are going to be the main 
you know, sources to the production and offense for the Chargers. But we also needed a reliable young player to squeeze in in between them at the tight end position, right? We don't need a thousand yards from Gerald Everett. We don't need 10 touchdowns from Gerald Everett. We need to have him help us move the chains and score when necessary. And I think that's definitely going to be the case with a player like Everett on the Chargers. He's not going to be George Kittle out there, but he's going to provide exactly what this team needs. Okay. And lastly, because I know I'm going to get asked even more about this. This doesn't mean we're not signing offensive line. Okay. <laughs> I've seen some people a little shaken by the fact that we don't have a right tackle. That's okay. I'm a little worried too. Okay. That's a huge need for this Chargers team, but I do need to explain that just because we signed Everett doesn't mean we can't sign a right tackle. Okay. We likely will. But moves don't have to be made on a linear timeline, okay? The Chargers saw a guy they wanted. They saw the tight end, you know, market drying up very quickly. And uh, he fit the book, so they decided to get him, right? And I think that's a great, intelligent move. You don't need to go right tackle before you grab tight end. You can do tight end first. You still have the money to grab right tackle. And we have plenty of cash, right, to sign guys like Abushi, maybe what options at right tackle like Billy Turner, Daryl Williams, whatever the Chargers feel is a great fit. Heck, you could even throw in an Akeem Hicks and other players into the mix. We have the cap. I don't think people realize how far $11 million can stretch, especially $18 million if they decide to go into their season reserve, right? You got a lot of money to work with. So I do fully expect the Chargers to still address right tackle before the draft. I would be shocked if they didn't, okay? So my bottom line in this video, a bit of a shorter video today, the Chargers offense got a boost. I think we should be super excited about that. This is great news. Sure, he's not a superstar, but we don't need him to be, right? He fits right along our other weapons and we'll find great success with Justin Herbert. I also see this as a great value, too. I saw a lot of tight ends get overpaid this offseason. The Chargers said, uh-uh, they held firm, and they still got a great player, in my opinion. This also leaves the door open to involve Donald Parham a little bit more in years to come. He's a very interesting prospect, Chicken Parham, right? I think he could still blossom into a permanent tight end one or tight end two going forward. I think he's a very unique guy in his size and his speed. And I think this signing does tell me that the Chargers want to keep him involved, which is great news, right? Two years of Gerald Everett. I think Everett also has the potential to absolutely pop off with this team and get an extension. We could be looking at tight end one and two for years to come in Everett and Parham. So long story short, get excited, Chargers fans, because when you guys see what Gerald Everett's got <laughs> via highlights on my Twitter, maybe a new hype video coming down the pipeline soon. You guys will see exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> this guy is mean, man. He brings a mean physicality to the game, and that's going to have Chargers fans extremely happy every time he touches the ball. So Gerald Everett, to me, if I had to put like a grade on this signing like right away, I think I would give it a B, B plus. I think it's definitely a great move, you know, via the cap space that we had, a great scheme fit. And he brings what Jared Cook brought to the team last year, but better, younger, I think more stable and, and, and uh, with more upside. So I like this signing a lot. I think Gerald Everett's going to be a very exciting player to watch with Justin Herbert. And bravo to the Chargers for addressing another position in need. Let's go get that right tackle next. I know that's going to bring a lot of peace of mind to a lot of Chargers fans. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me. This has been the director. Hit us up with a like and sub on your way out. If you did enjoy this content, we'll see you next time. And as always, bolt up and stay frosty. Trust me, guys. <laughs> This guy's going to bring the boom.